Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are back here in the Minecraft Survival Guide world and we're going to explore three kind of short topics in today's video focused on the most recent update to Minecraft at the time of this recording, the 1.15.1 update. <laughs> there, there are a few changes that I haven't covered yet, believe it or not, even though we did something about like 15 different ways 1.15 had changed the game. There are a few more that I have noticed since then or I didn't include in that video because I wanted to explore them in a little bit more depth and today we'll be going into a few of them, namely some changes to armor stands, some changes to elytra and the fact that you can craft things in a 3x3 crafting table by shift clicking the ingredients into place and that's the one I want to take a look at first because this is actually something that is really really useful for the mass crafting of some stuff that it hasn't po been possible to craft in the past using the uh, kind of crafting recipe book. The main one of those I think people are going to enjoy is fireworks because fireworks have a variety of different recipes and ways that the ingredients can be combined to produce different types of fireworks. Specifically if you have more gunpowder in the recipe it ups the flight time duration of the firework. If you add things like firework stars into the mix, it can change the composition of the firework and the effects it has when it explodes. It can add lots of lovely kind of patterns and things like that and, and colors and so forth. But if you just want to craft regular fireworks, that recipe does not appear in the recipe book at all. You can see here I've got paper and gunpowder, the two ingredients I need to craft flight duration one fireworks and the recipe doesn't appear here in the recipe book at all so previously you've always had to move these things into a crafting interface in order to produce the rockets and you can do that in your 2x2 or your 3x3 crafting interfaces if you have any of those around. Now naturally obviously if you spread the gunpowder out a little bit more you will end up getting a flight duration 3 rocket like so or a flight duration 2 rocket if you want to do that and it has not previously been possible to shift click ingredients into the crafting interface and it is still not possible to do that in a 2x2 crafting interface. To really take advantage of this ability you need to turn to the humble crafting table because at this point the game recognizes that you're in a crafting table crafting is your main priority and therefore when you shift click stuff around it's going to move it into the crafting interface instead of moving it around in your inventory so let's take a quick example of how this can be done i'm going to hold down the shift button and i'm going to left click on these and you'll notice they pop straight into the first slots of the crafting grid and it adds ingredients to the grid starting in the top left and moving across and then the second row and moving across and then finally the bottom row and moving across from left to right. So you'll notice if I click in a few other things that are completely unrelated to this recipe, it starts filling up the crafting table top to bottom from left to right. And that is how you end up shift clicking stuff into the crafting recipe. Of course, if you want to create a different crafting recipe and you don't have a couple of stacks of gunpowder, you can still split those out. And in fact, even if you ended up placing two of those in there, you would end up getting it into the first slot there first, and then you could always split it out like that. So you can end up crafting different recipes for the fireworks very, very easily just using shift clicking into a crafting interface, which believe it or not, even though it seems like the most intuitive thing in the world, now I'm doing it, was not possible before the 115 update. So definitely a really huge quality of life update that I haven't seen that many people acknowledge out there, but is really, really worth having. Another important recipe to consider when it comes comes to shift click crafting is dispensers because dispensers have notoriously been quite difficult to produce in large quantities the main reason being that they require bows as part of the recipe now a dispenser is quite different from a dropper a dropper only needs some cobblestone around the outside like that and a piece of redstone dust there that's what produces a dropper to get a dispenser and all of the functionality that that dispenser allows you need to add a bow in this middle crafting slot and bows do not stack in your inventory. They will not be able to uh, stack up so that you end up having to fill up all of the spaces of your uh, inventory here with bows and then you know, clicking and dragging them into the crafting interface over and over again took a fair amount of time. Today, however, I am going to revolutionize dispenser crafting using this new shift click feature. But first I'm gonna to have to visit the farmhouse because I seem to have run out of spider string in my storage system. So hopefully I will have some in the mob drops chest up here 
Turns out I don't. Okay, to the mob spawner. <laughs> yep, turns out I had three stacks and a little extra in the mob spawner, which is perfect. I'll be able to use those to craft ourselves a stack of bows. And then all we need is some sticks, which I could easily get from the witch farm. But I think the witch farm is currently out of sticks and I don't feel like AFKing. So let's just grab some planks and make a ton of sticks for ourselves. Okay, so now I've got three stacks of sticks, three stacks of string, seven stacks of cobblestone and a stack of redstone dust. That should, in theory, be the ingredients we need in order to craft 64 dispensers and previously you would craft a bow you'd probably put it in your inventory like that you could craft a dispenser from this crafting recipe interface and then you would just end up having to put the bow in there each time which would be a little bit labor intensive and now we can shift click stuff we're about to make that a whole lot easier. So what we're gonna do is open up the crafting interface here. We're going to put a bow in there and we're going to craft 64 bows or 63 considering that we already have uh, one in our inventory. I'm going to hold down control and hold down Q and my player character is just going to spit all of the crafted bows out onto the floor. I'm going to start picking up a few of them, of course, but we have them just hovering over our crafting table here, and if we are quick enough, they won't end up despawning. Now I'm going to go back into the crafting interface. We're going to choose dispenser. It's going to put the ingredients for the dispenser in there, but it's only going to put one at a time because you can only craft with one bow at a time. But now I can shift click the remaining ingredients into the areas where they should be. And then we get to pick up a dispenser. We'll put one of those there, throw the bow out. And then each time we want to craft a new dispenser, we just have to go into our inventory like this, shift click a bow into that central slot and then grab the dispenser as it comes out. And as you can see, we have ourselves 17 dispensers so far in just a matter of seconds. Not only that, but it's not gonna be possible to accidentally craft a dropper this way because I'm shift clicking on that right now. There isn't a space available for it in my inventory. So you are absolutely guaranteed to craft dispensers instead of accidentally crafting a stack of droppers as long as you don't have any open spaces left in your inventory. And believe me, when you're standing on a stack of bows like this, that that's not going to be a problem. Once you get down to the last few bows in your inventory, of course, this is going to be a bit more of a precision operation, but it is much, much simpler to craft a huge stack of dispensers in a very short amount of time, simply with the addition of being able to shift click that bow into the crafting interface on the crafting table. There we go, at long last I've crafted myself 64 dispensers, but relative to how that was in previous versions, that really didn't take any time at all. And I'm gonna stash those up here in my redstone components boxes up here so that we have a nice easy amount of dispensers to come back to. In fact, I might split the droppers and the dispensers up with some sort of row of something else like arrows or something, for example, just to make sure that I know these are the dispensers and these are the droppers because in the interface here, they look quite similar. So fireworks and dispensers are the two things that I craft on a regular basis that I've noticed have a vast improvement thanks to being able to shift click items into the crafting interface. But I imagine there are other recipes out there, anything that involves a non-stackable item that is going to be absolutely vital for, anything that doesn't appear in the recipe book because there are variants of the recipe also worth noting. So if you can remember any of those recipes that you feel like shift click crafting is going to absolutely revolutionize, go ahead and leave them in the comments so that other people playing will be aware of. Them. We're actually going to be using those dispensers towards the end of this episode when we take a look at armor stands, but for now, I think it's time for a quick break, and then I'm going to take you guys on another flying lesson. Hey folks, welcome back. So we're up here at the mob spawner because I figured a hot air balloon was a good place to start our flying lesson, and it's going to demonstrate something that we have not been able to do in Minecraft previously using Elytra, and there are some really quite interesting implications of this going forward. Now, previously when you were using Elytra, ever since Elytra were first introduced to the game, you were only able to activate them if you were falling. Originally when Elytra were added to the game, they would activate naturally when you jumped off something, but since then they have added the ability to press the space bar while you are falling. That's what opens the wings and allows you to glide, like so. I'm falling a little bit out of the balloon, I activate my Elytra and I'm able to glide to a stop. And this made the timing of ground takeoff very difficult. It was okay when you were jumping off something like, you know, a pillar or the, the roof of a house or even like, you know, a, a small wall if you had one nearby or something like that. Just hop up a couple of blocks, jump, open your wings, and then you could glide or boost yourself with some fireworks. But now, in this update, they have made it possible to activate your elytra even when you are traveling upwards 
instead of downwards. Previously, you could only activate them when you were falling. Now it is possible to activate them while you are still jumping upwards. And the difference is not going to be super noticeable at first because you can't really jump up more than one block at a time unless you have the effects of a jump boost potion. So let's quickly head over to my potions lab here in Old Town. Let's see if we can grab a spare jump boost potion and I'll show you what I mean. There we go. We've got a splash potion of leaping in the box here. That's absolutely all we will need. Let's splash ourselves with leaping. It should just be leaping one. So that's going to allow me to jump up a block and a half instead of just one full block. Let's splash ourselves with that now. And you'll see that my jump height is a little bit increased. Now I'm going to double tap the space bar as quickly as I can. And you'll notice there we go. At the top of my jump there, the elytra activated, but it actually activates before I start coming down. I actually get a little bit of lift from the wings before I start coming back down again. And that allows you to take off from a standing position very, very easily. You don't even need a jump boost to do it anymore. You just need to be able to double tap the space bar. And that is kind of revolutionary because you had to activate your elytra and use the firework in a very brief window of time if you were only taking off from a standing start on a flat surface like this. You were only able to really do it if you jumped and then activated your elytra as you were coming down from that jump and immediately hit the fireworks. Not only that, but it made taking off on servers very difficult because the server did not always register that you were falling before your character on your Minecraft client in your game window had already fallen and hit the ground. So taking off became very, very difficult, especially if the server was particularly laggy. I've never had that much of a problem with it here in a single player world because, you know, my ping to the internal server is very, very fast It's it, because it's all happening on the same machine. But of course, transmitting that to a machine that might be stored elsewhere around the world, you know, it takes a little bit of time. And so it wasn't really possible to take off from a standing start very easily if you were on a multiplayer server, unless you had something to jump off of, like the roof of a house or the side of your base or something like that. But now we are able to take off with the greatest of ease, simply because we're able to fly as soon as we leave the ground. Basically, as soon as you are traveling vertically upwards, you can activate your elytra. And so to demonstrate another really interesting way that we can take advantage of this, I've come back out here to the end just to grab another set of elytra as well. Of course, the first time you visit an end city, you won't have access to elytra, but presumably if you found a ship after that, you will have yourself some elytra, maybe with umbrella and mending if you can manage it and this affords you a really interesting opportunity when being attacked by shulkers. Let me grab all of the contents of these chests. Look like we've just got a ton of iron and gold in here and a somewhat useful iron sword I suppose but let's go out on deck and meet that shulker that's standing up on the back of the ship because this allows us some really interesting opportunities for fighting these ones. These are sometimes some of the more difficult shulkers to take on because they will attack you with those shulker pellets. You will be drifting out in the open. There's no ceiling to protect you. You basically have to dodge the bullets or block them with a shield, maybe swipe at them with a sword or shoot them with a bow to make sure that you can get back down to the ground again. But this time with elytra and with this new change that's been made, you can activate your elytra while you are levitating and simply glide back down to the ground, which has made it a lot easier to fight shulkers like this because if they hit you with that levitation effect, you simply need to dive back down towards them using the space bar and they won't need to be avoided quite so intensely. You can just drift back down if you need to. And this honestly makes me kind of wish they would implement potions of levitation in the game because the reason they have been avoiding that for player versus player combat is because potions of levitation could be exploited fairly easily. Imagine in a PvP scenario you end up hitting somebody with a splash potion of levitation. Suddenly their movements become a lot more predictable. They're just going to drift upwards into the air. They can't move horizontally very fast and they're basically going to be a sitting duck ready for you to pick them off with a bow or even hit them from below with a sword. However, once you take into account the fact that you can be wearing an elytra and swoop down on somebody like that, it suddenly makes the PvP aspect of that a little bit more viable again. So I would really like to see Mojang add a splash potion of levitation to the game, maybe using a shulker shell as a potion ingredient or something like that so that we can see a little bit more practical use of the levitation effect in survival because there are so many fun ways of using it outside of the context of pvp and once you have access to shulkers i suppose you could have it in a fairly limited space in the world itself once you brought a shulker back to the overworld but yeah 
being able to dodge that levitation effect or at least get around it in inventive ways really means there's no excuse anymore to not add a levitation potion into the game. But frankly, having this dive effect that we now have with the elytra actually allows for much easier exploration of end cities, much easier avoidance of shulker attacks, and it makes the process of raiding an end city a little bit more bearable. Now, of course, I'm always on the hunt for more supplies for shulker boxes, so I'm going to spend a little bit more time here, raid the rest of this end city, and when we go back to the overworld, I'll show you what I mean about armor stats. All right, we made it back from the end okay. Ended up with a decent amount of loot from that single end city. Still got an odd number of shulker shells, though. You hate to see it. And I can add that elytra to my collection, which I really didn't think I had that many of them, but I guess I do now. Also picked up a little bit of worthwhile armor to bring home. Got some fire protection, some projectile protection. Got a Fortune 2 shovel. Probably won't be using that for anything except gathering the occasional sapling, but let's throw that stuff in here for now. Oh yeah, I also spent a bunch of time collecting end rods because I wanted to add those to the lighting box from the ender chest episode so there we go got a few more end rods to add to the collection now so here's the thing for a while armor stands were some of my favorite things in minecraft because of the sheer amount of cool stuff you could do with them you could place armor on them in various ways and then hide them with various blocks around them in order to make some really quite interesting stuff so for example let me just pill it up with a few leaves here and place a glass block over the top of this armor stand and we can end up pushing the glass block down over the top of the armor stand so it produces a kind of glass case around the stand. Let's push this with a sticky piston like so, end up pushing that down a little bit further, maybe throw in one more block here that I can push. I guess another sticky piston will probably do the trick. Let's just push that like so and then that gets pushed down into place. We end up with a glass case around the armor stand. But there are certain materials you haven't been able to do this with, certain positions it wasn't possible to get an armor stand in, and there are certain ways in which other things interact with dispensers that it seemed like it would be logical for armor stands to interact that way, and they simply didn't, at least until now. Dispensers are capable of destroying armor stands by firing arrows at them, and now, as of this update, they are capable of dispensing armor stands so that they appear in the world. And we can use this for a variety of mostly aesthetic things. We can use this to create little kind of pop-up displays for target practice. If you want to make like a whack-a-mole kind of game with armor stands, it'd be possible to do that. Personally, what I want to do is make a kind of simulation of an armor factory. So you would end up having armor stands pop up into water streams that would carry them along and apply armor to them as they went because of course you can put armor and other wearable stuff like mob heads onto armor stands from dispensers. So for example here if I end up grabbing a little bit of armor for display purposes we we'll use something a little bit different as the activator here so let's add an armor stand in there dispense that and then we'll add the armor in separately because there is always a chance that the armor would be dispensed randomly from the dispenser because it chooses what to fire out randomly. If I just hit this a few times it actually dresses is the armor stand because it's activating the dispenser four times allowing the armor stand to receive all of the items that were in here. Then I'm not certain if the armor stand is slightly too close to be destroyed by an arrow but let's try that as well. Yep okay that's actually gonna be <laughs> it's not gonna work out that way but if we ended up putting a dispenser a couple of blocks further away and putting arrows in there and activating it with a button in this case bam it's able to destroy the armor stand in which case all of this stuff could be collected up by a hopper put back in the dispenser and ready to be redistributed and the coolest part of course is that previous to 115 armor stands could not be dispensed by dispensers in that way and now I'm interested to try a couple of experiments here because Previously, it was never possible to put armor stands inside of leaves, except for a very brief time in Minecraft 1.11.2. Uh, so this was kind of my nemesis for the longest time, because leaves, of course, if you push them with a piston, they just break, like so, for example, because leaves cannot be pushed. They are too fragile for that to happen to them. However, I am wondering if it is now possible to dispense an armor stand upwards into this set of leaves here. Let's put a dispenser in there, let's put an armor stand in, and let's activate that from the side with a button. It is. That's fantastic. Because if you imagine building a trellis with leaves on, almost like you're building, like, say, a winery, 
or something like that. You can have armor stands hidden inside of the leaves like this, and that will allow you to make it look like the leaves are supported by something. Not only that, but now if you wanted to have some kind of internal structure in there, if you wanted to put some green or brown armor on this uh, using like leather armor, for example, but I'm going to use the gold armor here. For this example, you would be able to dress the armor stand using a dispenser as well. And of course, right now, the illusion is kind of broken by the fact that it has the dispenser underneath it and the dispenser cannot be pushed out of the way by a piston but if you can imagine setting up a sticky piston here so that when you break a dispenser it automatically pushes a block here maybe it zero ticks the block into the space where the dispenser was so the armor stand can't fall out you could end up replacing that block underneath it very easily making the whole thing look a lot more natural another cool thing this allows you to do is dispense an armor stand into a set of obsidian blocks right here and how that's dispensed it's actually managed to dispense the armor stand inside the obsidian once we break out this first block of obsidian our armor stand is in in there which allows you to create busts using obsidian which otherwise would not be a block that you could push into the hitbox of an armor stand same kind of deal really it's all for aesthetic purposes but there might be some interesting applications of stuff like this when you get out there into the world let's take this as an example frostwalker bridges you can use armor stands wearing frostwalker boots to create an ice bridge across a river like this as long as the river isn't super wide because it all relies on how far the armor stand can slide when pushed by a slime block. So let's do a quick example of that here. We're going to set up a dispenser in the ground here. We're going to have a slime block being pushed by a piston here. So I guess we'll need to put the piston one block back there. We'll have a slime block in front of that, probably with a furnace or in this case, a dispenser wouldn't be a bad idea, just as a non-pushable block. A dispenser facing upwards like that and a slime block here. So once the armor stand gets dispensed by this dispenser, obviously you need to activate this on a little bit of a delay, but you could dispense it once like that. The dispenser could for a second time apply the Frostwalker boots and then you just use a button to activate this piston and it gets pushed across there creating a bridge made of ice that is temporary because once it's done that it will actually just thaw out again and the Frostwalker ice will completely disappear. Then once you reach the other side of the river here you just have the armor stand be detected maybe by a piece of string that's being detected by an observer or something like that. That activates a dispenser firing an arrow which breaks the armor stand and the boots, they get collected into a hopper and they can be sent back across the river via a dropper pipe or something like that to the dispenser over there or it can stay over here so you can recycle it into a similar system on this side and create a two-way bridge. Before 1.15 came around you would have to have the armor stand placed in the world with the frost walker boots on it at all times because there was no way of basically tidying away the armor and the armor stand after it had been used once. Now in 1.15 we're able to dispense them out of dispensers which makes it possible to create an automated bridge like that which I imagine we'll probably end up doing somewhere over at the ski resort because naturally that's the kind of place where Frostwalker makes perfect sense. It's got an icy surrounding to it. I like the idea of some areas out there being hidden or inaccessible unless you use that type of bridge. So there you go folks. Those are three new additions in Minecraft 1.15 that I thought needed a little bit more explanation hence the need for a video themselves. We're not quite done with 1.15 yet though we have some really interesting stuff to explore with bees in the near future but that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.